come closer inshallah Maybe 15 minutes or so Maybe wrap up inshallah Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin wal aqibatu lil muttaqin wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawmiddin amma ba'd So yesterday we started to speak about surah Ali Imran and we spoke about some of the aspects of Surah Ali Imran. Today, I'm going to briefly just elaborate on Ali Imran, which was the family of Hazrat Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. So we mentioned yesterday that Maryam radiallahu anha was the daughter of Imran and Hanna. She was the daughter of Imran and Hanna. And her son was Isa alayhi salatu was salam. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the name of the surah given is Alu Imran, which means the family of Imran, which obviously means that Isa alayhi salatu was salam is the son of Maryam, and she is the daughter of Imran and Hanna. And so Isa alayhi salatu was salam is not an ilah, he's not a god, but he is one of the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's a human being. So I spoke about that yesterday. Now, the story of Hazrat Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha, as much as that is inspiring, so is the story also of um, Isa and Maryam alayhi salam. And then on the other side, you have the story of Zakaria alayhi salatu was salam. So basically, um, Zakaria alayhi salatu was salam is married, his wife, the wife of Zakaria alayhi salatu was salam is who? The sister of Hanna. Hanna and the wife of Zakaria alayhi salatu was salam are sisters. So Hannah's daughter is Maryam. So the responsibility to take care of Maryam radiallahu anha comes to Zakaria alayhi salatu was salam. Are you following me? And scholars say that when Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha's father Imran passed away, so people were, you know, deciding who should take the privilege to take care of Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. And so they drew lots. And the Quran speaks about this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَيُّهُمْ يَكْفُلُ مَرْيَمْ وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ إِذْ يَخْتَصِمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points towards this, towards this incident because all the different, you could say the priests and the, the, the rabbis of the, the masjid of, 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 of Al-Quds, they wanted to take responsibility for Maryam radiallahu anha because everybody was very inspired by her pious nature. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they drew lots and it came out to be that Zakaria alayhi salatu was salam is going to take care of Hazrat Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. So one, Hazrat Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha is related to Zakaria alayhi salam. Zakaria alayhi salam is related to Hazrat Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. And yesterday I mentioned that Hazrat Maryam's mother, Hanna, had made intention. Ulama have written that she was barren. That she couldn't have children. So she made a vow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah please give me a son. If you give me a son, I will make this son over to the khidmat of the Quds. This is the intention that he had made, that she had made. And this is called nazar, which is a vow. Even in our shara, in our deen also, you are allowed to make a vow like this. You can make a vow if you want to, for example. So she made a vow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It so happened that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her a child, but it wasn't a boy. She was expecting a boy. It wasn't a boy child. It was a girl. So nonetheless, um, they, took, they took care of her, but she was grieved. She, not grieved because yani she wanted a boy and she didn't get a boy and she got a girl. She was grieved because she wanted to make over this child for the khidmat and the service of the masjid. And she felt that being a girl, she might not be able to do it the way a boy, the way a boy would have done it, right? Because there is masla, there is the, the, the masail of parda and you know, so many other things. So nonetheless, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and I said, yes, I, we, we spoke about this yesterday, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُكَ الْأُنْثَى وَإِنِّي سَمَّيْتُهَا مَرْيَمْ وَإِنِّي أُعِيدُهَا بِكَ وَذُرِّيَّتَهَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ And the amazing thing, the Prophet ﷺ says, that مَا مِنْ مَوْلُودٍ That whenever a child is born, right, as soon as the child is born, there is some type of influence that shaitan has over the child. This is regardless of whether it's a Muslim child or a non-Muslim child. It's irrelevant. Right? There is some influence immediately that shaitan has. Subhanallah. This is the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, for, except there's, a, there's, there's an exception, and the exception is two people 
which was Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha and her son Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected Hazrat Maryam. Allah ta'ala speaks about this in the Quran. Wa inni saymaytuha Maryam wa inni u'iduha bika wa dhurriyataha. And Hazrat Hanna, she made dua that Allah, I'm keeping the name of this girl Maryam. Maryam means the worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means the worshipper of Allah ta'ala. So Allah, I, uh, I'm keeping the name of this girl Maryam out of this intention that she will grow up to be obedient and worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the first thing. The second thing, That oh Allah, I ask you to protect her and her progeny from shaitan al-rajim, from the shaitan which is accursed. And so as a result of her dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected Maryam radiallahu anha and Allah ta'ala protected her son uh, Isa alayhi salatu was salam from what? From the influences of shaitan. We know this because of the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. So that's one thing. Now, when Hazrat Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha was born and she was being, take care, be, be, being taken care of uh, Hazrat Zakari alayhi salatu was salam Allah Ta'ala, you know, obviously the whole incident is not mentioned in detail Allah Ta'ala says فَتَقَبَّلْهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتًا حَسَنًا وَكَفَّلَهَا زَكَرِيَا Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala accepted her for the services of the masjid Allah accepted her for the services of the masjid so contrary to what her mother thought Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala accepted Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha وَأَنْبَتَهَا نَبَاتًا حَسَنًا and Allah Ta'ala gave her the most brilliant of upbringing as a child. And how was that? That was a combination of two things, subhanAllah. One is, is that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had already instilled and given Maryam radiallahu anha a very pious and good nature. Right? From Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And that, by the way, every child, mashallah, that is born, كُلُّ مُولُودٍ يُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that every child that is born is inclined towards tawheed, is inclined towards fitrah, is inclined towards the ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, but along with that, Hazrat Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha was given, was given this nature by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She also got two additional things, subhanAllah. One is, is that she's born in a pious family. Right? You can imagine, she's, she's, they are, this is the family of Anbiya. Right? This is the family. She's going to be a mother of a, of a Nabi. She's going to be the mother of a Prophet. And she's under the care of a Nabi. This is Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. And so she got, divine, she got uh, this attention. She got the tarbiyah uh, from Zakari alayhi salatu wasalam, which is the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And so that gave her the environment which was the best environment that was most suitable for her tarbiyah. It was the most suitable environment for her tarbiyah, right? And this is probably the most important factor when it comes to the tarbiyah of a child. When it comes to the upbringing of a child is the environment. Right? The environment of the home, the environment of the masjid, the environment in school, the environment in the social circle that surrounds a child. Right? So she's surrounded by who? She's surrounded by Zakaria alayhi salam, she's surrounded by her aunt, by her mother, and these are all pious people. So she's surrounded by the right people, that is the one. So as a, as a child, the, the tarbiyah that she's getting and the influence of the people, and number two, she's being taken care of by Zakaria alayhi salam, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa kaffalaha Zakaria. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about one of the miracles that Allah ta'ala gave to Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. Kullama dakhala alayha Zakaria al-mihraba wajad indaha rizqa. Whenever Zakaria alayhi salatu was salam would visit her, she was in her chambers. She, she had a room that was given to her. Whenever Zakaria alayhi salatu was salam would visit her, dakhala He would find that she had a rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani, there were always some fruits that she would have. Some ulama say that were not even seasonal fruits. One is, for example, the fruits that you're getting in the market. There could be an assumption that, okay, maybe somebody, maybe, you know, she had that, she brought it from home, or some, you know, somehow. But these were fruits that were not seasonal fruits. Right? So Zakaria alayhi salam, whenever he would go, وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقَ قَالِ يَا مَرْيَمُ أَنَّ لَكِ هَذَا Zakaria alayhi salatu was salam would ask her, Maryam, where are these fruits coming from? Who is supplying them to you? Is somebody coming here apart from, uh, uh, other than me? Right? And that's part of the tarbiyat. Of Zakaria alayhi salatu was salam to make sure that she's being taken care of and that nobody nobody is going 
Uh, nobody, nobody is there except Hazrat Zakaria Ali Salam and his family that's taking care of her. So she said, "Huwa min indi Allah. Inna Allah yarzuqu min yasha'u bi ghairi hisab." She said that no, this is not coming from anyone. This is coming directly from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Inna Allah yarzuqu min yasha'u bi ghairi hisab. And whoever Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grants this person without any hisab and without account. Right? There is no count to what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala can give a person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this story of Maryam radiallahu anha, this encounter, as Zakariya alayhi salam is seeing this. That seeing this miracle of Hazrat Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha inspired Zakariya alayhi salatu wa salam to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zakariya alayhi salatu wa salam never had children. Zakariya alayhi salatu wa salam never had children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this in Surah Maryam also. So we're speaking about Ali Imran and Surah Maryam is going to come later on in the 16th Jews. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this in Surah Maryam also. Allah ta'ala speaks about it here also. So Zakariya alayhi salatu wa salam never had children. He made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is it that inspired him to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is the fact that he saw that has Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. She has these fruits that are coming to her directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah wants to give a person, regardless of whether it's the season or not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give a person. When that is the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Zakariya alayhi salatu wa salam said that, Wallah, this is not the age for me to have children, but when you can give Maryam fruits that are not seasonal, ya Allah, you can give children also when it's not seasonal. Right? It's not the age. Ulama have written that Zakari alayhi salatu was of advanced age. Allahu alam. Some say 80, some say 80 plus. Allahu alam. But it was, it was definitely him and his wife, they were not of an age where, they, where, 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 where it's possible or where it's normal for them to have children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them children. Right? Imagine. Now you can imagine the level of Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha, right? That she is an inspiration for Hazrat Zakari alayhi salatu was who is the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the caliber that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given, the status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given to Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. And I mentioned yesterday the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam where Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kamula min rijal kathir wa lam yakmul min nisa that there were many from amongst the men that attained, uh, that attained a high position of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kamal in ibadat. They got kamal in ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But from amongst the women, there was a few. Meaning there was, you know, there was a few. Right? But, you know, from amongst them was Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. She, she became an inspiration for so many other people, subhanallah. This was Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. So she's a chaste woman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had, gra had granted her, you know, everything basically, so to say, that would, get, that would ensure that Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha receives the most appropriate and best tarbiyah. And that brings me to the point that I want to make that when it comes to us and our children, we also require two things. We also require, we also require two things. One is, is that we also require the right environment. Right? Children, they need the right environment. We also need the right environment. Right? Sometimes you take it for granted and you think that, okay, you know, as, as a child growing up, yes, they need the right environment. We also need the right environment. If a person is not in the right environment, then the most easiest of good deeds become difficult for a person. The most easiest of good deeds become difficult for a person. To pray salah becomes difficult for a person. Right? Why? Because the environment is not there. Right? So we are also in need of the right environment. And to provide that right environment, to try and provide the most right environment, the most conducive environment, for our children also. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the hadith which I mentioned earlier that كل مولود يولد على الفطرة فأبواه إما يهودانه أو ينصرانه أو يمجسانه Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that every child is born on the fitra. And ajeeb, there's an example that is given in the hadith of, uh, uh, of, of Abu Dawood. Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that when an animal is born similar to an animal that is born that is salim min al -uyub. This animal it has no defects. This animal has no defects when the animal is born. Then as the animal is growing up, 
and there's some defects that are caused by external factors, right? Maybe, Allahu alam, that animal gets in fight with another animal and lose, because of that it loses an eye or you know, something happens to that animal. This is, a, this is a defect that is caused afterwards by these external factors. Similarly, Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam says that a child is born, his child is born on the fitrah. Now, what is going to influence that child is the social circle, meaning the parents. Right? These are all external factors that are playing in on the influence of that, of that child. Right? And that's where the nurturing aspect comes in. Right? Nurturing. Right? That what type of nurturing is being done? That's the first thing. And the second thing, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in one hadith, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam says, every single one of you is a shepherd. Every one of you is a shepherd. And every single one of you is responsible for his or her flock. Right? So now you take, for example, a shepherd. Right? This might sound abstract because you know we might have never seen a shepherd, but you might have seen a shepherd, you might you might have you might have even shepherd, you know, or you might have tended to animals yourself, Allahu Alam. But what does a shepherd do? Shepherd leaves he goes out in the he goes out in the field, right? Wherever the animals, wherever the grass is, wherever they can feed, and you know, he goes there, and then he's there with them pretty much the whole day, watching out for them, looking after them, making sure that there's no wolves, making sure that there's nothing happening to them. And similarly, whatever is in the best interest of those animals, a person or, or, or sorry, the shepherd will make sure that he's doing that. So he hasn't got his interest at stake. He's got the interest of those animals at stake. And that, that's what a true shepherd will do. Right? If they, if they still need to eat, he will, you know, then when there's need for water, etc., I'll give them water, etc. Right? So he's got the interest of his flock at stake to make sure that they're being fed and taken care of. Similarly, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولًا نَدَعِيَّتِهِ That every one of you is a shepherd in his or her own capacity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us about those that are under our care. Allah will ask us. Right? So just as a shepherd is responsible for his sheep, when he comes back, he's not the owner. right? The owner is not necessarily tending to the animals. He might be somewhere else. But he has to make sure that he took 10 goats, he must bring 10 goats back. If he took 10 goats and bring 9 back, there's going to be a problem. You understand? right? So he's got to take care of them. He's responsible for them. Similarly, Nabi Ali is saying that we are responsible in a similar way, in a similar fashion for our children. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this beautiful example in the Quran for us to read and for us to understand and internalize that what effect tarbiyat can have. Because when tarbiyat is right, meaning the nurturing and the tarbiyat and the upbringing is right, when the environment is right, when the nurturing that is being given is right, the people that are surrounding this child is right, then subhanAllah you can have the likes of Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. This is, the, this is the lesson that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us in these ayat. In these ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the importance of tarbiyah. Right? And obviously the environment. Right? You cannot ignore the environment. Right? Environment has to be right. The environment has to be conducive. The environment of the masjid. Right? That's why visiting the masjid, coming to the masjid, or visiting the places that is going to help us structure and bring up our iman. This is the thing. Because imagine, throughout the course of the day, we, and including our children, we are surrounded in an environment where everything is being spoken about other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? They go to school, they're hearing about science, they're hearing about math, they're hearing about so many other things. And I'm not saying that these things are bad. You know, These are subjects that they need to learn. But... Constantly what they are hearing and what we, what we are hearing, because again, whatever information we are getting, whatever the medium for that is, whether it's social media, whether it's through friends, whether it's the internet or TV or radio or whatever it is, X, Y, and Z happened, this happened, that happened, all these things are, you know, appear to happen or, and, we, 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 and we're made to feel, we're made to think and understand that they're happening because of X, Y, and Z, right? Cause and effect. So we're always in an environment of where things are being spoken about other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if that's constantly our environment, and that's constantly the environment of the children, and they don't hear on a regular basis that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that does, can imagine the damage that happens to the iman. Can imagine what happens to the iman of that person. Do we understand? 
can imagine what happens to the iman when we don't hear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that is doing right? because curiosity that is you know that is a, a driving factor and we're curious and mashallah our children are curious and they want to know why is it like this and why is that happening and this and so forth and so on and so that's why we have to make sure that we are in contact with the right environment also the right tarbiyah and the right environment these are probably the two most important things that shape a person and these are two most important things that shape a person so we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah ta'ala also makes us like the family of Hazrat Imran which Allah ta'ala speaks about in Surah Ali Imran may Allah ta'ala make us like them pious people who are looking for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also give us the ability to tend to our flock and our families in a way similar in a fashion that as Zakriya alayhi salatu wa salam did for his family and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and our children from all types of wrong influences amin ya rabbal alamin wa sallallahu wa sallim ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanakallahumma ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik subhanarabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin